Hi, AnaQuest here. This is my recap for the anime Windbreaker. If you dig my recaps, don't forget to subscribe and smash that notification bell. The story begins as we watch someone barely managing to stay on a tightrope. Students gossip about how he keeps getting into fights and how he nothing but trouble. Even the parents talk about how dangerous he is. Everybody thinks he is too dangerous to even look at. But that's just how it is because everybody knows he doesn't know how to deal with folks. They straight up diss his looks, saying he won't even dye his hair black. They even have a problem with the color of one of his eyes, claiming he must be cursed. Everybody thinks he is nasty, and the kid eventually falls off the rope. We then see our angry protagonist for the first time, named Sakura. He explains he digs strong folks and doesn't give a damn about the weak. Nearby, some dudes harassing a girl, asking if she want to do something. She says she want to smash some eggs on their heads, but that be a waste of good eggs. The guy warns her not to act all high and mighty, and he stops her from bouncing. Sakura then explains that what he hates the most are weak people who think they are strong. Sakura interferes with the gang of harassers and tells them that it's too early to be acting so lame. The leader tries to attack Sakura, but sad to say, he is exactly the type Sakura despises. Sakura drops this dude easily and wonders what the hell is going on in his head to make him think he is strong when he ain't. Sakura demands they remember his name and face, so they can warn all the weaklings they know to run when they see him. Sakura is a bit of a psycho, because he also wants them to know his name, so they can tell all the strong peeps how to find him. He announces he is Sakura Haruka from Furin High School. Sakura leaves these jerks, but the girl stops him to say thank you. Sakura is all confused, wondering if she is talking to him. She confirms she is, and Sakura is straight up clear about the fact that he ain't doing that to save her. He only smacked those dudes because they were annoying the hell out of him. Sakura turns down her offer to Grub, but she ends up feeding him anyway. She can tell he ain't from around here and ain't too many peeps visiting this spot. She explains that the gang he had just fought has been causing a lot of problems, and the town's public safety has become non-existent. She admits she ain't from around here either and introduces herself as Tachibana. Sakura can't wrap his head around why she is being so nice because most folks would be scared of him, especially after he just beat up five guys. Sakura reluctantly chows down the food when she asks him to, but he is blown away by how damn good it is. He wonders if her joint gonna take off, but she corrects him because the dummy is trying to say take out. Tachibana pointed out his eye and hair colors were all messed up, and he wondered if she had beef with it. She is more amazed than anything, but paranoid Sakura thinks she wanna throw down. Sakura is surprised because normally peeps are disgusted by his looks and demand he dye his hair. Sakura break it down that looks don't mean shit in a fight, and that's why he came to Furin. Furin knew for having students with the shittiest grades, but they are also the illest fighters. They are the ones who slip through the cracks at other schools and end up at Furin. They straight up brawl every day to decide who is on top. They are so dedicated to fighting that they even throw down on holidays, and Sakura is dead set on becoming the top dog. Tachibana peeps out that Sakura has some high-ass goals. But Sakura straight up admits he is dumb as a brick, and fighting is all he knows. But to him, ain't nothing sounds better than scrapping his way to the top, and this place was the perfect fit. It doesn't take long for Tachibana to figure out he is already in school uniform when school ain't starting until tomorrow. It's because he's all hyped up. The embarrassed Sakura explains that he just moved, so he didn't have anything else to wear, but she just teases him more. Our hero Sakura resorts to fighting as always and demands that they take this argument outside. Just then, Tachibana peeps a customer for getting his bag, but Sakura reminds him. As Sakura bounces home, he can't help but think about how damn weird that whole encounter was. The old man hooked him up with some candies and told Tachibana to thank him. Sakura ain't used to all that praise, so he straight up thinks the whole damn town's weird, including Tachibana. He points out he is rocking the uniform of a school full of troublemakers, and his appearance is hella strange too. It doesn't add up for people to be thanking him. Regular folks would be on guard around him and not trust him. Sakura once found someone's wallet, and they straight up accused him of stealing it. Just then, Tachibana explained that Sakura made the right call coming to Furin, but sadly, there ain't no damn way he gonna be the top dog. Shockingly, she straight up says he might not even beat anyone there let alone be the top dog. 
Sakura pointed out she got no damn clue how strong he is. She admits he might have them strong ass muscles, but explains he still won't be able to be the top dog. The problem he has is that he is all alone. Sakura is getting mad as hell and declaring he ain't that damn weak to rely on anyone else to win. As he leaves, Tachibana clarifies she ain't talking about physical strength. She suggests he go meet some Furin kids because then he gonna stand out. Nearby, a group of hoodlums wreak havoc, and some poor lady calls someone for help. Sakura bumps into the same dudes from earlier, and the leader is surprised that he came. He straight up calls our boy Furin trash, but Sakura just Trina brush him off. The leader peeps that he ain't forget Sakura's face and starts clowning him about his appearance. This dude is shaken when he realizes Sakura's hair and eye color are real. They thought he was just doing some messed up cosplay, but he points out that it being real is even more disgusting. Sakura grinned because this was the reaction he used to get to his appearance. This the disgust he did get used to, but it's all good because he done gave up on that shit. Sakura still wanna feel like he has some worth though. If he can beat whoever is standing in front of him, then he can feel superior. The problem is that Sakura can't stop thinking about how Tachibana told him that he wouldn't be the top dog because he is alone. The leader declares that his gang will start a war against Furin for Sakura punching him. But Sakura isn't even listening. He all focused on Tachibana's words as he punched the leader again and declared he ain't the one dodging people. Sakura let out his true feelings about his appearance, it doesn't make any sense how people act. He knows better than anyone he looks strange, but he never did anything to the people who diss him. This is just who he is. Sakura starts beating down this huge group of thugs. In his mind, as long as he is the strongest and the best fighter, he will be the top dog. Being alone doesn't mean shit. The gang tries to jump him all at once, but it's useless because Sakura is way more skilled than them. Sakura straight up took on any fool getting near him, and the fight was somehow lopsided as hell even though he was outnumbered. Just then, one of them thugs go and snatch up Tachibana, but he pays a damn high price for that dumb ass move because Sakura straight up knock his ass out. Tachibana showed her gratitude, but Sakura gotta break it down once again that them punks just pissed him off. They tried to pull a knife, so he told them idiots to keep the fight fair. One dude tries to creep up on him, but he ends up learning a really valuable lesson. Sakura kept fighting off more of them, but he was stuck defending Tachibana in one spot. He wonders why the hell he is defending her in the first place and reminds himself that helping others never ends well. Still, Sakura keeps holding it down for her, but eventually, one of the thugs uses the knife to slice his leg. Sakura is in a really messed up situation now and think about how that's exactly why he doesn't defend folks. He once again questioned why he decided to help her and get ready to take a bat to the dome. Just then, someone steps in and stops the attack and Sakura notices this stranger rocking a Furin uniform. This dude shockingly blocked the bat with his back and told Tachibana not to tell a certain person that she was in danger. This guy wiped out the bat wielder and straight up told them punks they did mess up this whole damn town. His buddies arrive, and the guy furiously tells the gang that they're in big trouble. Backup has arrived, but they were disappointed to see so few opponents as they didn't all need to come to fight. Sakura is in absolute shock because he can't wrap his head around why Furin is saving his ass. The thugs are straight up scared shitless when they see this dude named Hiragi, but they think they got this in the bag because they got way more numbers. Hiragi tells the others to handle these fools quickly, so they start straight up wrecking them. One dude goes and attacks Sakura, and Sakura is stuck in a messed up spot because his leg ain't moving. Hiragi saves his ass again and tells Sakura to fall back if he hurts. Sakura gets all pissed and points out that Hiragi ain't his boss, explaining that the thugs were his to take on. Hiragi just tells him to stop moving around because it makes it harder for them to protect him. Sakura is completely shocked, and he looks around to find that the people of the town are cheering on the Furin guys. Sakura can't believe what he is hearing, and Tachibana reminds him about how she said the town's public safety was practically non-existent. But that all changed, and it all thanks to the Furin students. The first thing they did was put up a notice board at the town's entrance. It is straight up to say that if someone brings trouble to the town by harming people or property, they gonna handle them, no matter who they are. Tachibana explains that somewhere along the line, the town's folks give the fear and students a new name because they fought to protect the town. They are known as the town's Bofurin shield, called Windbreaker. After the fight, all the town's folks come out to thank the boys, 
even though they used to be seen as low-level troublemakers. The Fjern students now got mad respect in the community. However, they still throw down a lot. They are loved by everyone. But most importantly, they are needed. Sakura was straight up blown away by how damn different this town is because the fighters get treated like heroes. They look like thugs and throw down all the damn time. But ain't nobody scared of them. Sakura feels all sorts of emotions, and he in shock when the townspeople tell him he did a bang-up job holding it down all by himself. Some sweet little old lady even offers to patch up his wound. But Sakura can't handle all that kindness and demands they all cut it out. Tachibana stays calm and starts taking care of his wound, reminding him that she said he was all alone. But she explained that she could see right through him, and know he ain't choosing to be alone. She can't fully understand him, but she explains that the people in this town need his strength. Sakura can't process all this shit happening and straight up declares he doesn't need anybody and doesn't want to get involved. Tachibana is quick to point out though, that his actions say something different. She brings up the old man he helped and how he fought hard to protect her. Tachibana says he ain't given up on people and he doesn't have to. At the very least, she declares that she won't turn her back on him, so she asks that he turn toward her as well. Tachibana is sure this is the way he gonna become who he wanna be. Sakura is still struggling to accept it all, but he makes a wild dash toward the others. He leaps into the air and points out how the delinquents seem to be playing hero now. He admits all this talk about being the town's shield sound damn cool, and he straight up wreck the gang leader who has been terrorizing the town. Everybody watches in shock, and Sakura wonders if peeps are really gonna stick by him there. We find out that this is the story about how a low-level outcast who only knows how to fight becomes the hero of the town. After a while, Sakura rolls up to Tachibana's restaurant, all pissed off because he gotta carry Grand Masato on his back. He's worried she gonna hurt herself getting off, but he just tells Granny to hurry it up. But damn, Grand Masato surprises him with her smooth dismount, and Sakura's fuming because she told him her hips hurt so bad she couldn't walk. The old lady thanks him, but Sakura still ain't sure how to handle all that kindness. Tachibana stops him from bouncing and serves him some grub because it's his entrance ceremony today. It's still mad early, so she determines again that he all pumped to go to school. Sakura denies it, but she completely understands, since Furin got a lot of interesting characters. Just then, this kid named Nairi shows up and straight up faceplants. He asks Tachibana what she thinks of his new uniform. But Sakura points out he still got the damn tags on his jacket. Nairi manages to rip them off, and Tachibana lets Sakura know they're gonna be in the same grade. Nairi notices Sakura's wild hair and eye, and Sakura thinks he got a problem with it. Nairi is surprised by his attitude and figures Sakura must be going through some tough shit at such a young age. Nairi tries to figure out why a nobody like Sakura ended up in their town. Sakura's insulted, but Tachibana assures him that Nairi acts like that with everyone. Nairi gets all hyped and tells Sakura that Furin High ain't no regular school. The peeps in Bafurin stand up for the locals, protect the weak, and crush the wicked. They some straight up heroes of justice. Everyone who comes to Furin wanna be like them and protect the town too. Nairi's one of them, but he wonders why someone with no ties to Furin like Sakura ended up there. Sakura lays it all out and reveals he there to take the top spot. Protecting the town is cool and all, but there's a whole bunch of strong folks there, and Sakura just want to be the best among them. Nairi gets all serious and tells him not to talk big if he can't back it up, but his reason for saying that is cause he's scared Sakura gonna go bald. Sakura's done with his little comedy act, so he demands they throw down. But it's getting late, and Nairi got a dip because he want to do three rounds of town patrol before the entrance ceremony. He declares that from today on, he gonna be a hero of justice. But damn, he is showing off how clumsy he is as he heads out. Tachibana straight up notices how hilarious this kid is. But Sakura can't believe a total dork like him wanna be some hero of justice. Tachibana's mad surprised to hear Sakura talking about someone's looks. But Sakura means these dudes like him, always chicken out when it comes to throwing down. To Sakura that's the lamest thing ever. Tachibana says it's just his assumption. But Sakura explains he's seen it go down way too many damn times. Then Tachibana drops some knowledge on him. She points out that the coffee fruit looks way different from the beans she got in her jars. The lesson is, if you only see things from one angle, you ain't never gonna see the real deal. She thinks Sakura shouldn't be so quick to judge and tells him to get to know people better, so he can see who they truly are. Sakura really takes that lesson to heart, 
but he just thinks she means Nairi is a badass fighter. Tachibana's mad disappointed, wondering if fighting is the only thing he cares about. After Sakura bounces, he still thinks he's onto something. And out of nowhere, someone stops him and offers him some free bread. Dude's hella confused, so the baker explains that the Furin kids always help the town, and he wanna give back. They recognize Sakura as the dude who stood up to the gang the other day, and everybody's talking about him. Sakura doesn't know how to handle the praise and dips, but they insist he takes some sandwiches for lunch. While Sakura's cruising through town, he notices mad other people feeling the same way. He can't figure out what the deal is and wonders what's wrong with all these people, acting way too nice to a guy like him. But then Sakura realizes he was just assuming they'd treat him like crap. Right then, Sakura gets shocked when a girl begs him for help. In some sketchy alley, Nairi gets straight up beat up cause he tried to stop some dude from hassling a girl. The guys mock him saying he ain't gonna protect the town, because he's the one who needs protection. Nairi tries to make them take it back, but they just push him around. Then those guys get hella surprised when Nairi declares that anyone causing pain or messing up the town is gonna get wiped out by the Bafurin. They all start laughing, saying only dudes in superhero shows talk like that. The leader gets really annoyed and says it doesn't matter if Nairi's a windbreaker. He's the one getting wiped out. Dude's about to attack him, but Sakura shows up right on time to help Nairi. Nairi's mad shocked and wonders why Sakura's saving him. But Sakura doesn't even pay him any attention. The bullies are laughing because Sakura steps in to save his buddy, but Sakura's insulted by that. He reveals it ain't true, and he just hates weaklings that think they strong. Sakura straight up declares that it makes him sick, so the bullies decide to show them what they got. Nairi fears for his safety, because he is sure Sakura can't take them on his own, but ain't nothing to worry about, as the guys are knocked out just a second later. Nairi can't believe his eyes and wonders who the hell Sakura really is. Nairi's straight up scared of him now, but he still thanks Sakura for the help. Nairi's pretty sure Sakura must be disappointed to see someone like him at Bafurin and attending Furin High. But Sakura just points out he wasn't saving him. Sakura calls him a typical poser, and he warns Nairi to know his limits and what he's truly capable of. Nairi spills his story of getting beat up in middle school all the time. Then one day, someone from Furin came to his rescue, someone he'd normally be scared of. But in that moment, that person was hella cool, and Nairi wanted to be just like him. So he enrolled at Furin to become awesome too, but now he's realizing just how pathetic he is. Sakura realizes he made assumptions about Nairi being a coward in fights, but it's clear that Nairi can stand up for himself. Sakura tells him he's a weak fighter, but there might still be a chance he's not totally lame. Nairi's mind is blown, and the girl he protected shows up to thank him for having her back. She thanks Sakura too, but he tries to bail. Nairi stops him and pulls out his little notebook again. He bombards Sakura with questions about his height, weight, blood type, and hobbies. The kid goes nuts analyzing Sakura and taking notes like crazy. Sakura cuts him off, so Nairi explains he likes gathering data on guys he admires and finds cool. Sakura basically tells him to do his thing, so Nairi takes it as an invite to observe Sakura up close and personal. Nairi offers to give him a tour, claiming he may not be much help in a fight, but he's the best damn guide when it comes to the town and its people. Sakura's taken aback when Nairi declares he can guide Sakura all the way to the top, but in the next moment, Nairi gotta push Sakura to get a move on. But Sakura's all about chowing down cause he gets hella hungry after throwing down. Sakura's amazed by how bomb the bread tastes, and Nairi gets caught up in it too, but then he realizes they gotta hustle and get to school. Finally, the two of them make it to school, and Sakura's pumped cause there's gonna be a whole bunch of people, just like the dudes he met before. Nairi peeps the class roster and gets all hyped because he sees that he and Sakura are in the same damn class. Nairi's mind blown by all the other names on the list, but he ain't actually know any of them personally, they just people he looks up to. Sakura don't think it matters who's in their class, but Nairi points out they're gonna be spending a ton of time with these folks. Right then, Nairi gets shocked by this one name in particular, and Sakura points out he looking really drained. Nairi shakes it off and asks Sakura to try and be friendly with everyone in class, maybe even flash them a smile. Sakura thinks Nairi must be kidding, but Nairi reminds him that the Bafurin peeps came together to protect the town. 
Sakuna ain't from around there, so these dudes definitely gonna ask why he came to Furin. Nairi thinks it's crucial to show that Sakura ain't no threat, and he ain't the enemy of Bafurin. But Sakura ain't even paying attention, cause he busy getting warmed up. Nairi wonders why, and he's shocked when Sakura says he just preparing for anything. Nairi's disappointed cause Sakura ain't listening, and he points out that even the slightest misunderstanding as an outsider could turn the whole damn school against him. Sakura doesn't even give a damn if every single person turns on him, and he reminds Nairi that he there to fight his way to the top. Sakura struts into the class, and Nairi freaks out cause it's hella obvious that everyone is staring at him. The class full of some hardcore looking students, but Sakura couldn't ask for a better crowd. One student knows who Sakura is, but Sakura is on high alert. Nairi apologizes for him and instantly recognizes the student from his book. Then this kid says he's Jack Sparrow. Sakura falls for it at first, and Nairi had no freaking clue this cold-looking dude could be such a prankster. Nairi knows his name's actually Suo, and Suo says his eye patch seals away an ancient Chinese spirit in his right eye. Sakura loses his temper when he realizes this kid's all talk, but then Suo gets serious and steps up to Sakura. The vibe gets tense, and Nairi's thinking people from out of town really get treated as anomalies. Sakura gets ready to throw down, and Nairi's scared there might be no way to stop it. Just then he's shocked when Suo just pets Sakura on the back, and compliments him for being the star of the main street brawl that happened the day before. The other students wonder what he talking about, so Suo explains that before Haragi showed up, Sakura was already holding it down and protecting the town. Nairi had no clue about this. The other students start gathering around Sakura. There were rumors about some unknown student in their uniform, and they glad this person did a solid job helping the town. They get a bit too close for comfort, but Nairi figures it's better than them turning on Sakura. It's pretty clear they don't see him as an enemy, so Nairi relaxes because the person he was scared of before should be cool with Sakura too. These dudes still wonder why Sakura came to Furin in the first place, so Sakura spills that he came to snatch the top spot. They all surprised, so Nairi tries to explain that Sakura ain't there to hold them down and beat them up. But Sakura says he actually is, but his new buddy steps in and tells him to chill. Just then a table gets tossed, and it's some straight up terrifying student. Sakura gets an excited look on his face, but Nairi begs him not to fight this guy. He the most dangerous dude in their class, maybe even the whole school, and his name's Kyotaro. Sakura declares he prefers fighting mad dogs like him, so Kyotaro says he'll crush him. Kyotaro throws a powerful punch, and Nairi's shocked when he realizes that Suo instantly moved him out of the way. Sakura dodges it too and gives props to Kyotaro, saying he's the type he expected to see at Furin. Kyotaro gets even more pissed, but Sakura's loving every second of it, because that's exactly what Sakura was hoping for. Nairi is shitting bricks but Suo is pumped to see some shit go down. Suo explains that Sakura screwed up by claiming he'd be the top dog in front of Kyotaro. Sakura's trying his damn best to dodge Kyotaro's attacks, while Suo spills that Kyotaro's been repping Furin High School since his middle school days, because of his dedication. Kyotaro was the only one allowed to call himself Bafurin before officially starting shit. He's so damn loyal to the top dog that he's earned the nickname, the top dog's fanatic. Some other student begs Suo to stop the fight because he's convinced the new kid's gonna get his ass handed to him by Kyotaro. But everyone's jaws drop when Sakura dodges another attack and lands a counter. Sakura points out that Kyotaro's just a fanboy of the top dog, meaning he can't think for himself. Dude probably can't even make his own damn choices, so Sakura makes it clear that a guy like that doesn't stand a chance against him. Kyotaro all bloody and pissed off, ain't backing down, they're about to throw down some more. But then some announcement interrupts them. The person on the other end is all clumsy with the damn microphone, but eventually welcomes all the students to Furin. Sakura's annoyed as hell by the interruption, and just wants to get back to kicking ass. But all the other students are totally focused on the announcement, and Sakura wonders who the hell this guy is that managed to grab their attention. Turns out the dude's name is Yumamiya, and Sakura figures out he's Furin's top dog, the toughest man in the whole school. Everyone's waiting eagerly to hear what he's gotta say, but Yumamiya goes and says he forgot. He just tells everyone to remember to enjoy their youth. They're in high school now, so they should make a shitload of memories. He suggests they all hit the beach and grab some shaved ice. Nairi can't freaking believe what this badass is saying, but Kyotaro thinks he's trying to mock the top dog. 
Yumamiya figures with so many students, there's bound to be some beef, but he assumes they ain't troublemakers who'd start a brawl on the first day. Kyotero tries to hide the fact that there's some troublemakers throwing fists on day one, so he wipes the blood off his face. Then Yumamiya gets dead serious for one message. He tells everyone to defend the damn town. They were given the name Bafurin, so they gotta protect the people and every damn thing that matters. That's the school's one and only rule, and all the students accept that shit. Sakura's freaking shocked that this dude ain't even in the damn room, but everybody's all eager to follow his orders, and he wonders just how badass of a fighter Yumamiya is. Suo wants the two fighters to shake hands and show some deep ass understanding of youth, but Sakura ain't even thinking the fight's over yet. Nairi wonders why Sakura's turning all red, but Sakura shuts his ass up. Suo reminds Kyotero that Yumamiya wouldn't be happy hearing he fought a classmate. And he tells Sakura that showing respect to other students is crucial if he wants to be the top dog. Surprisingly, Kyotero wants to shake hands, so Nairi begs Sakura to hurry the fuck up and do it. Sakura gets ready for it and tells himself to just shake the damn hand. Sakura must have been through some real tough shit because he's gotta remind himself not to slap Kyotero's hand away or toss his ass to the ground. Sakura shakes his hand but thinks it feels hella weird touching people outside of a fight. Suo's glad to see their youth burning bright, but their grip is so damn tight that they both wonder if the other's a freaking gorilla. The other students go wild and can't believe Sakura actually landed a hit on Kyotero. Sakura's surprised by how nice they're being, but he realizes it's been like this the whole damn time since he came to Furin. Sakura's all quiet in his thoughts, but the other students are wondering if he got choked out or some shit. Sakura joins in the fun and points out he ain't getting choked out that easily. In his mind though, he's thinking he had no freaking clue people could be so friendly. Just then, the students are told to go outside, and moments later Sakura's surprised they gotta paint over some graffiti. Sakura's clueless why the hell they're doing this, but Nairi's taking pride in doing a good job, and Suo's complimenting his painting skills. We take a look back to right before this painting shit happened, showing what went down when they were told to head outside. The student who ordered them explains he's gonna get in deep shit if they take too damn long. It took them almost 8 minutes to get their asses out there. So Haragi explains toddlers could move faster than these dummies. Sakura tells Nairi he saw Haragi when he saved Tachibana. But Haragi overhears and gets furious. Sakura ain't supposed to mention Tachibana being there, and Haragi explains he's gonna be in some serious shit if word gets out Tachibana was in danger. Haragi straight up threatens that some messed up shit will go down if Sakura doesn't listen. But it turns out all he does is start coughing up blood. Haragi pops some stomach meds and explains that he don't know what brought Sakura to this school, but he chose one hardcore leader to roll with. Nairi's wondering what kind of dude Haragi is, so Sakura explains that he's the type of weirdo to stress himself out until he's got a stomach ache and needs an anti-gas pill. Nairi's taking mad notes on Haragi and says it's because Haragi is one of the school's four kings. Yumami is sitting at the top of Bafurin, and right below him are his generals the four kings. Each one's like a captain for all three years of a class. Haragi splits the students into groups with a second or third year as the captain, and he says they're gonna patrol the town. Haragi is the captain of Sakura's group, which also includes Nairi, Suo, and Kyotero. Kyotero and Sakura are in the same group because Yumamiya told Haragi to keep a close eye on the troublemaking fistfighters. The guys are shocked that he knows about the fight. So Sakura points out he was just defending himself. Haragi's gotta pull them apart so they can keep patrolling. Sakura points out all they doing is walking around, and wonders why they ain't beating up some intruders. But Haragi explains that it'd be offense, not defense. Just walking around in their uniforms is enough to scare off the smaller crews, so that's the plan. Sakura thinks it's hella boring, but Haragi points out that only liking fights doesn't make him much fun either. Right then Haragi does his duty and helps an old man on a ladder. Turns out they're painting over graffiti because that's part of Bafurin's job. When they're done, they get some grub as a thank you. Haragi gets why Sakura's all about fighting because all them other Bafurin guys used to be the same way. But eventually they realize being needed by the townspeople is fun too. Sakura gives it some thought and takes a bite of the snack. They come across a tunnel where Sakura spots a symbol of a damn ugly dog. Nairi wishes Sakura would watch his words and he explains they're at the border between Bafurin and another team's turf. Once they cross the train tracks, it's a whole different country with its own damn rules. It'd be hella dangerous to stir up some shit over there. The other team's symbol is a lion's head, and they believe strength is everything. 
that's supposed to scare off outsiders, but that's the kind of motto Sakura digs. Right then the crew peeps a Furin middle schooler getting chased down by the lion's head fools. It's clear as day that this kid ain't gonna make it across the damn train tracks in time, so Haragi just bows his head, because there's jack shit they can do. But then out of nowhere, everyone loses their damn minds when Sakura and Kyotero go all out on the lion's head punks. Nairi's scared shitless because they ain't supposed to mess with lion's head turf. Sakura says the kid's on their damn team, so both Sakura and Kyotero point out that it was the lion's head fools who started the interference. Sakura tells Kyotero to bounce because he can handle this solo, but the dude don't listen. The lion's head fools start clowning on their own teammate for getting knocked out with a single kick. But Sakura's thinking about how ruthless they are, because they're exposed to be on the same damn team. Right then, the lion's head clowns start shitting their pants because someone shows up after seeing what went down. Haragi can't freaking believe it's this dude who showed up of all people. He spills that he's a lion's head second in command named Tagami. Tagami's wondering what the hell's going on and casually greets Haragi. Haragi explains that those fools were chasing one of their own. Sakura is getting irritated by how chill this dude is, but he can tell that Tagami's legit when he figures out that Sakura and Kyotero are the ones who knocked out his team member. The knocked out dude gets up all pissed off because they broke the rules and stepped into their turf. But Tagami shocks everyone when he smashes a bottle over his damn head. Tagame don't give a damn if it was their turf or not. He only cares that this kid lost the damn fight. Tagami starts wailing on this fool, punch after punch, and explains that losing means he's weak. The lion's head crew doesn't like weak ass members, so he keeps beating him down, but Haragi steps in. Haragi tells him he's part of Tagami's crew, but Tagami corrects him. He rips off the dude's lion's head jacket and says their crew don't need no weaklings. Everyone's in shock seeing this ruthless dude, but Sakura just thinks he's a lame ass. He thought the lion's head fools believed strength was everything, but he points out that beating up the weak don't really prove strength. Sakura stands right up to this dude, feeling disappointed because he thought he found a fun crew. Everyone's shocked seeing him stand up to Tagami, and the lion's head fools are sure Tagame's going to end his damn life for saying what he said. But surprisingly, Tagami ain't tripping about it. He's more curious about Sakura's funky hairdo. Tagami also ain't feeling Sakura's fast talking, and he gets all serious and says it pisses him off. Tagami straight up announces that he's made his damn decision and declares that he'll beat Sakura to a pulp when the time's right. He even claims he's got Sakura's face memorized. The lion's head crew bounce after that. Nairi's scared shitless, pointing out that Sakura and Kyotero might have just started a damn war. Suo calms his ass down and says he don't want Nairi ending up like Haragi. Haragi's so damn stressed that he's gotta slam down about 10 anti-gas pills. Nairi tries to remind him not to exceed the recommended dosage. Nairi wishes Sakura didn't provoke Tagami and says maybe he would've let them off the hook after that kick. But Haragi knows better. He explains that Tagami's probably the most territorial dude in Lion's Head. He wouldn't have let that shit slide. But what's done is done. Then Haragi shocks everyone when he admits that he should've made the first move and apologizes. He tells some middle schooler named Sasaki to come with them, so they can report to Yumamiya. Sakura can tell Haragi's stomach is really acting up now, so he wonders if Haragi's really scared as hell of reporting to Yumamiya. Yumamiya sounded pretty laid back during his announcement, so Sakura's wondering what kind of dude he really is. They get to the rooftop of the school, and everyone's amazed at how freaking dope it looks. Haragi approaches Yumamiya, and Sakura gets ready to meet the big boss at the school. But all the students are straight up shocked when Yumami is just psyched about his damn plans. The fool wants to barbecue with everyone in the summer, and Sakura is wondering if this dude's really the top dog. Haragi then says they've got a problem on their hands, but Yumami says he already knows all about it. That makes no sense since nobody could have told him about what happened yet. But it turns out that he's just talking about his damn plants. The rest of the crew's finally catching on to why Haragi despises reporting to Yumamiya. The dude never listens to a damn word you say. Sakura tries to get his attention, but Kyotaro gets pissed off because he ain't letting anyone talk to his idol. Dude's ready to throw hands, but then he remembers Yumamiya's right here and wouldn't approve. So they all end up chilling and Yumamiya goes on and on about his plant empire, when they should be focusing on the real deal. Sakura can't even tell one plant from another. And while Yumamiya might be a good dude, Sakura's more confused than ever about why he's got mad respect from so many people. After sitting through Yumamiya's plant lecture for what feels like an eternity, 
This kid who got his ass whooped speaks up and spills about what went down today. He saw a shoplifter causing havoc in town, so he tried to chase him down. But before he knew it, he wandered straight into the lion's head territory. The goons were hot on his trail, and he had zero chance of outrunning them. Just when he was about to give up, Sakura and Kyotero swoop in like heroes and save his sorry ass. Homi admired the Furin students so much that he wanted to be like them. But all he did was start a full-on brawl with a lion's head, dragging everyone into the mess. And for that, he's genuinely sorry. Yumimiya calls out Sasaki by name and gives him props for doing what he did. Sure he may have inadvertently caused a war, but he did it while trying to protect the people of this town, so he has nothing to be sorry for. As for the war, he doesn't have to worry about it since Yumimiya says he will personally handle it. But real talk, he's dying to know how Sakura and Kyotaro pulled off the rescue. So Sasaki explains that they kicked one of the guys off his feet. Yumimiya knows damn well the lion's head ain't gonna be cool with that, but he can't help but find it hella amusing. Haragi steps up and apologizes because all this craziness went down while he was supposed to be keeping an eye on them. But Yumamiya ain't laying blame on him because mistakes happen all the freaking time. And then Nairi rats out Sakura for making shit worse by taunting Tagami. So Sakura explains that he couldn't stand Tagami talking about strength being the only thing that matters, while the dude's just picking on the weak, so he said it to his face with no regrets. Yumamiya gets what went down, so he gets up and Sakura thinks he's about to throw down, but he just pats him on the head and says he was thinking the same damn thing because those dudes got a messed up mindset. And on another note, Yumamiya heard about Sakura's main street heroics yesterday and today he saves Sasaki, so Yumamiya gives props to Sakura for looking out for the peeps here. Kyotero's hella jealous because Sakura's getting all the attention and Sakura's feeling some weird sense of ease around him. He's starting to get why folks are drawn to him all the damn time. It's because he's got this presence that makes anyone feel safe. But Sakura ain't letting himself get all cozy with that warmth. So he straight up slaps Yumamiya's hand away. Right then and there, Haragi gets a call from his boy Kaji. But all he hears are the words lion's head before the call cuts off. Yumamiya asks if something's up. But before they know it, they hear a voice on a megaphone. They all look down to the courtyard and see some dude dragging one of the students who knocked the hell out. He claims he's the top dog of Shishitorin, otherwise known as Lion's Head, and his name's Tamiyama. This dude's come here today and kicked the shit out of hella Furin students because he wants to have a fair and square brawl with Yumamiya. And his smile shows just how damn pumped he is for it. Nairi's losing it because the leader of Lion's Head's here in the flesh while Sakura's getting all hyped because he knows Tamiyama gotta be stronger than Tagami. Just then, Sakura feels this crazy presence behind him, but he can't quite put his finger on it. So when he sees Yumamiya bouncing, he starts tailing him, and the others follow too. Once they're all outside, Yumamiya tells them to stay the hell out of this one. But Sakura being Sakura and insists on throwing down. Yumamiya gives him a cold ass warning, straight up saying he don't repeat orders twice, Sakura's hit with a wave of obedience, because he knows he would've caught a fist to the face if he talked back just now, but he's clueless as to how Yumamiya's whole demeanor switched up so damn quick. He steps up to Tamiyama and calls him out for still holding on to one of the Furin students by their hair, but Tamiyama just brushes it off and straight up laughs in Yumamiya's face about what he did. Sakura's thinking this dude must be hella strong or straight up crazy to have the balls to diss Yumamiya to his face like that. And all he really wants right now is to go head to head with Yumamiya, one on one, because he's got a legit reason after what Sakura and Kyotero pulled. Yumamiya just stays chill while Tamiyama keeps circling him, still begging for a fight like a kid who wants to go party. But then Yumamiya speaks up and says that while it might be true that Furin started it by knocking out that dude under the bridge, Tamiyama has gone way harder in retaliation, so he thinks they can call it even now. Tamiyama agrees that what he's done is enough to at least call it even for now. But that doesn't mean things are settled as he throws a kick at Yumamiya's face. Yumamiya catches it, but Tamiyama wasn't actually trying to sneak attack him. He just wants to start more shit so he has a reason to throw down with Yumamiya. It doesn't make any damn sense why he's so hell-bent on fighting. So Yumamiya asks him what his in-game is. Tamiyama says it's not necessarily because he wants a brawl, but because he wants Yumamiya over at Lion's Head. He's been mad lonely ever since he took the top spot. But Yumamiya on the other hand, has mad friends to kick it with. 
So Tamiyama came up with a logical solution. Take over all of Furin so he can have some damn fun too. Yumimiya gets where Tamiyama's coming from, but before he can even try to reason with him, some other members of Lion's Head show up. While Tamiyama's all confused as to why they're here because he didn't call for backup, they straight up tell him it was a dangerous move to go solo and attack Furin High like this. Sakura and the others step up to join Yumimiya, and even though he tells them to fall back again, Sakura stands his ground, because while he respects a fair duel, he won't stand for a jumping. Tamiyama's getting frustrated because he was about to have a legit showdown with Yumamiya, so he wants everyone else to bounce already. But Tagami doesn't think a duel's gonna go down today, especially with the whole damn student body watching them. Yumamiya peeps what's about to go down, so he shouts for all the peeps in the classes to stay put as he steps forward, saying he'll take on Tamiyama in a duel like he wanted. He just wants him to tell his crew to back off so shit doesn't get messy. Tamiyama's all stoked to finally get his match, but then some punk from Lion's Head starts dissing Yumamiya calling him a softie, and that sets off Kyotero, who can't stand no Yumamiya haters. Then another one starts clowning Suo, saying he's so basic he needs accessories to stand out. But with how he holding his hands like an anime girl pose, Suo just finds it cute as hell. Tagami steps in, telling everyone to chill for a second. Then he tells Tamiyama that if he really wants a duel, they should save it for another time because it's getting dark already. If they start fighting in the dark, they won't be able to fully appreciate how badly they beat down the Furin students. Sakura fires back, saying the only face getting smashed in will be Tagami's face. And since Tamiyama can see there's some serious tension between those two, he suggests they turn the duel into a team match instead. They can have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one battles, with Yumamiya facing off against Tamiyama, Tagami against Sakura, Kyotero against Yukinari, and finally Suo against Kanema. Yumimiya ain't having it saying if it's a duel he wants, the two of them are enough. But now Tamiyama wants to turn it into a full-on tournament because that sounds way more fun to him. Sakita and the others agree to the terms, but just when they think it's settled, another lion's head dude shows up and wants in on the action. He's got beef with Haragi, and Haragi's down to throw down, so he joins the tournament too. With everything sorted, Tamiyama declares that the fate of the Lion's Head crew is on the line, so they better in their best and have fun. Later, they all hit up the cafe to eat some food and chill, and Nairi's freaking out because he thinks they're in some deep shit. Sakura's getting real tired of Nairi's whining, but he's the one who started this whole mess in the first place. Tachibana brings over some food and tells Nairi, there's no point stressing so damn much because it ain't gonna change a damn thing. But Nairi's got a good reason to be worried, because if by some horrible turn of events Yumamiya actually loses, Bofurin might go down the drain. Tachibana sticks to her point, saying worrying won't change shit either way, and he should know damn well these guys ain't weak enough to lose to Lion's Head that easily. Sakura straight up demolishes his food like a freaking beast, and once he's done, he asked if he could dip for the day. Nairi's jaws drop at how damn fast he finished, but they gotta wait for Yumamiya and Haragi because they stayed back to persuade the other Furin students not to screw things up even more. Sakura gets that, but he's clueless why they had to meet up here of all places. So Suo breaks it down that this joint is like a chillaxing spot for Furin peeps, where they gather up before some major throwdowns. And just when he says that, Yumamiya busts through the door and starts fawning over Tachibana. Sakura thought this meant she was his girl, but they both denied it. Yumamiya instead said Tachibana was his darling little sis, but she denied that too, leaving Sakura all kinds of confused about what the heck their actual relationship is. Tachibana's feeling embarrassed to say this, but she explains that she and Yumamiya grew up in the same orphanage, and Yumamiya just randomly decided she's his sister at some point with no questions asked. Sakura doesn't find it all that weird, but he's a bit shocked to learn that she's the little sis in this equation. She says she's only 16 but he thought she was at least 20 or something because she acts way too mature for her age. But as he's saying this, Kyotero goes and throws a damn chair at him, getting on his last nerve. But what really freaks him the hell out is the way Yumami is looking at him, like he's about to unleash some serious pain on Sakura. He brushes it off and laughs it out, and then Haragi reminds Sakura that he better never let Yumami find out Tachibana was ever in danger, or hell's going to break loose. A while later, Yumamiya is chowing down on his food, but Haragi seems lost in his own damn thoughts. 
he's been thinking about the ex-top dog of Lion's Head, and that gets Sekiro wondering if Lion's Head used to be different back in the day. Those dudes believed in pure strength and had a whole bunch of muscle on their squad, but they'd never stoop so low as to chase down some middle schooler and jump him. Furin even had a straight-up brawl with Lion's Head once, but it was always satisfying for everyone involved. But ever since Tamiyama took over, shit's gone down really fast. Dudes picking fights left and right, and things ain't been the same since. Yumami is pretty damn sure Tamiyama's to blame, even though he ain't got all the deeds. But if they throw down tomorrow, they'll find out for sure because sometimes punches are the only language dudes like them understand. When it's closing time, Tachibana shuts down the shop, and everyone's about to bounce, but before they leave, Sasaki takes a moment to formally thank Sakura for stepping up and saving his ass when he was in deep shit, and of course, Sakura gets all embarrassed again, like a shy little puppy. The next morning, they all roll up to the bridge and step into Lion's Head territory for the tournament, and there Tamiyama and the rest of the Lion's Head crew are waiting, ready to kick things off. Tamiyama is all pumped up leading the way, and the Bafurin crew is following suit. On the way, Sakura spots that the whole damn place is filled with bars. Nairi explains it gets very crowded at night, but it's also hella dangerous. Sakura just now realizes why Nairi is there and points out he ain't in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Nairi straight up declares he is there because he is a Bafurin member. Even if he can't protect others like them, he at least want to protect himself. Nairi asks if he can learn by watching. Sakura gets all pissed and tells him to do whatever the hell he wants, but Suo can tell Sakura secretly feeling flattered. Hiragi gets all worked up about that and wishes they'd show some damn nerves about the fight. Yumamiya tells him to chill a bit and mentions the newbies got mad potential. Tamiyama leads them further into the area and Tagami formally welcomes them to Orion, the secret lair of the lion's head. Nairi peeps his lil info book and explains to the others that the lion's head lair used to be a movie theater called Orion, but it went belly up. Nowadays they call it Ori like a cage. They all step into the theater, and the lion's head crew cheer like crazy as they announce the fighters about to enter the arena, the crowd going wild and unruly, so Nairi was straight up terrified. Suo gets why they call it a cage now because this place is a damn den of wild beasts. Nairi starts wondering if they're gonna make it back home or even make it out alive. Sakura sees this and reminds Nairi that he is there to study. He tells Nairi to keep his eyes forward, and Nairi refocuses on that. Tamiyama announces it's time to kick things off, and Yumamiya points out he turned this whole thing into a damn spectacle. Yumamiya tells his crew that even though it's a big event, the only fight that truly matters is his one-on-one -on -one with Tamiyama. The rest of their wins or losses don't mean jack, so they should feel chill when they step on that stage. Sakura straight up rejects that and declares he ain't planning to lose, whether it counts or not. The others agree, and Yumamiya stoked about how dependable they are. Tamiyama wanna throw down with Yumamiya first, but ain't no way they letting the captain start the battle. The blonde dude wanna go first because he has been shooting daggers at Kyotero with his eyes the whole damn time. Everybody is cool with it, so they head to the stage. Sakura reminds Kyotaro that they still got unfinished business. But if he loses to sorry ass losers like these dudes, Sakura doesn't want to fight him ever again. Kyotaro as always, ain't got no words and just heads to the stage. The blonde dude's name is Yukinari, so Nairi looks him up in his little book. Yukinari is known for being a heavy hitter, breaking ribs with just one punch. Suo tells them not to worry though, because Kyotaro is pretty much the same. But Yumamiya straight up shocks them when he says they ain't even in the same league. On stage, Yukinari annoyed by Kyotaro's stare. He pulls a dirty trick to distract Kyotaro, faking something bad happened to Yumamiya. Yukinari takes advantage and lands a punch, calling Kyotaro an idiot for losing focus in a fight. Sakura knows ain't nothing to worry about though. Kyotaro just building up his rage and straight up wrecks Yukinari. He calls Yukinari an idiot and reminds him to show respect when talking about Yumamiya. Yukinari knocked the hell out, but Sakura was just disappointed by how weak he was. The lion's head dudes can't believe he got knocked out so easy and wonder who the hell this Bafurin newbie is. Nairi points out Kyotaro only needed one punch, and the lion's head dudes getting concerned. Tamiyama on the other hand, finding it amusing how tough Kyotaro is. The Bafurin dudes peep them and see how focused Tagami is. 
Now Tamiyama wanna throw down with Kyotero, so Tagami has to tell him to chill and wait for his turn. Nairi straight up stunned by their reaction. They don't give a damn about the dude who lost, they are out here complimenting the opponent. Nairi is more certain than ever that there's definitely something off about these two dudes. Yumamiya points out Kyotero has always been tough as nails, so it ain't no surprise a punch to the face doesn't faze him. Nairi was still shocked by it, but Sakura ain't because he had already gone up against Kyotero. The others are stoked because this means Sakura finally accepts Kyotero's strength, but Sakura is too embarrassed to admit it. While they argue, Yumamiya peeped the lion's head leaders. Tamiyama wondering how Tagami would take down Kyotero if they had to throw down. Yumamiya watching closely because Tagami is so focused that he doesn't even answer Tamiyama. His seriousness got Tamiyama all hyped for more fighting, so he tell a couple of his dudes to clear the stage. The dudes are tired of dragging Yukinari, so they just decide to toss him off the stage onto the ground. They clowning Yukinari for being so weak and kicking his knocked out body, which makes Nairi call them out for being straight up awful. Nairi is horrified when Sakura tells the two dudes to not even talk near him, he never want to hear them talk about being worshippers of power ever again. And it embarrasses him just hearing wimps like them speak. Suo joins in and points out that kids like them just won't understand till they get defeated. The dudes getting furious and wondering if they looking for a fight. Their anger turns to straight up terror though, when Tamiyama dead serious tells them to step back because they ain't their opponents. Sakura all eager to throw down next, but Suo declares it's his turn to fight the quiet kid. Suo points out his opponent looking hella stressed, so they should get some exercise. The kid named Kanema, and all the lion's head dudes cheering him on. As Suo getting ready to fight, he explained he thought Sakura was dumb for aiming for the top spot. Sakura getting furious, but Suo explained he was wrong, he thought Sakura's words were empty and meaningless, but now he know Sakura actually got some backbone. Suo thinks that's dope as hell, and he gonna give it his all so he can keep up with Sakura. Sakura never knows what to say in these situations, so he just tells Suo to hurry the hell up and get on stage. Nairi searching for info about Kanuma in his book, but Sakura is more interested in learning about Suo. Nairi explains Suo was famous for being strong in middle school. Sakura can tell that just by looking at him, but unfortunately Nairi ain't got no more info. Haragi explain he heard about Suo quite a bit too, but he ain't got no details about him either. Same goes for Yumamiya, but he could tell from the moment they met that Suo a kind dude. On stage, turns out Kanuma pissed as hell after seeing Yukinari get knocked the hell out. Suo points out that this ain't like the lion's head dudes because they treat their own members like crap. Kanuma reveal he had known Yukinari his whole damn life and they always had each other's back. Suo points out he only wheezes when he is a victim, and that's some childish behavior. Suo straight up clowning him, talking to him like he a little boy, and Sakura thinking about how the look on Suo's face ain't that of a gentleman. Suo's mockery make Kanuma attack, but everybody is shocked when Suo dodge that shit easy. Everybody watch as Suo keep clowning him, suggesting they both start acting like grown-ass adults now. Kanuma is scared as hell because he can't understand how Suo got behind him so damn quick. He decide to attack faster, but just end up getting tossed to the ground. Every attempt at landing a hit fails, and Kanuma getting even more frustrated when Suo keep insulting him. Suo just playing with this dude, and Nairi is amazed because he making it look like his opponent tripping all on his own. The crowd getting annoyed with Kanuma, and telling him to stop letting himself get played. Kanuma think about how they ain't got a damn clue what it's like to have every damn move you make easily countered and he wish they could try and throw down with Suo. Yumamiya realize Suo ain't no regular gentleman, and Sakura points out he ain't got an ounce of kindness. He is hella ruthless, tormenting a weaker opponent and making him look like a damn fool. Kanuma gets straight up wrecked so makes it clear how big the skill gap is between them. Sakura says he'd wanna end himself if he was Kanuma, but of course he ain't ever gonna be in that position. Haragi is surprised to see Suo trying to prove a point in this fight, and Yumamiya figures it's because he got influenced by someone else. Nairi realize that too and think about how Suo want to keep up with Sakura. Suo's fight got Sakura's attention, so he wondering how he can get Suo to seriously throw down with him. The fight keeps going, but it's clear as day that Suo playing with Kanema. Suo barely got a move to dodge all his attacks, and he dropped Kanema once again. 
The crowd turning against Kanema, and he is horrified when he sees that Tamiyama has fallen asleep watching the fight. What's even worse is that Tagami ain't impressed at all, and he remembers what happened to that weakling under the bridge. Kanuma starts panicking, and his heart racing like crazy. Suo sees this better than anyone, and he explains that Kanuma finally starting to figure out what it takes to be a grown-ass adult. Kanuma losing his damn mind so he goes in for an attack, but Suo shut him down right then and there. Kanuma was shocked when Suo revealed he already knew what going on in his head. Suo assumes Kanuma imagining himself turning into the person he used to mock. And that's good for him because the answer to being an adult is imagination. Kanuma is scared as hell, but Suo calmly points out he can move on to the next step now. Suo keep being ruthless with his teaching, explaining to Kanuma that he need one more thing to turn his imagination into reality. Suo gets ready to attack, so Kanuma begs him to stop. Right then Tagami asks Suo to end the fight. Kanuma doesn't get why, so Tagami just tells him he humiliated them enough. Tagami corrects himself though, because Kanuma can't humiliate them no more because he ain't part of Lion's head anymore. This was Kanuma's worst nightmare and his imagination just became reality. Suo's final lesson is that being an adult means being able to feel for others. To do that, you need imagination and experience. Suo is actually happy for Kanuma because at least he learned something. As Suo bounces, the lion's head crowd is dead quiet after witnessing those straight-up violations. And to top it off they realize Suo's just a freshman at Furin. They're starting to get that messing with Ba Furin will be a big mistake. Yumamiya gives props to Suo for that mind-blowing victory, saying he's hella strong. But Suo doesn't see himself as all that impressive. On the other hand Nairi is beyond impressed because he's never seen anyone move like Suo. He asks if it's Kung Fu or some other martial arts style. But Suo can't really answer because he don't know. His instructor was self-taught so he mixed in a little bit of every martial art. But that aside, Haragi points out how damn surprising it was to see Suo get all emotional. He's a bit embarrassed that he went so far as to humiliate Kanema, but he did it for Sakura's sake. Sakura doesn't want to take the blame for Suo's actions, but he warns Suo to take the fight seriously if they ever throw down. Nairi's getting tired of Sakura always thinking about fighting everyone, but Suo doesn't really want to tango with him because he knows Sakura would be a pain in the ass in a real brawl. Hearing that Sakura loses his cool and almost jumps on Suo, Nairi has to use all his strength to hold him back, and Yumami is just glad everyone's getting along, if you can even call it that. Right then they peep Kanuma dragging his bestie's unconscious body across the floor, looking like a total wreck. Once Yukinari finally wakes up, he looks over at Kanuma who seems like he's about to lose it. So he crawls over and asks if Kanuma lost his fight too. Kanuma can only muster up the words it's over because now that they both got their asses handed to them in front of the lion's head crew, they'll be punching bags for everyone else from now on. Tamiyama's still pumped as ever and now he wants to throw down with Suo too. But Tagami wants to keep things in order, so he asks who's up next for their fight. Sakura finally thinks it's his damn time to shine. But as he stands up and turns to Tagami to head onto the stage, some other dude stands up and straight up points at Hiragi because he wants to throw down with him next. Hiragi still has some unfinished business with Sako, so he apologizes to Sakura because he gotta take the next fight. Sakura ain't having it because since both of the other first years got their chance to brawl, so there ain't no reason why his turn should be skipped. Hiragi brings up the fact that Sakura's supposed to fight Tagami, but the dude doesn't look ready to rumble yet, so Sakura gotta wait a bit longer. Since Tagami's the second in command at Lion's Head, it's usually Hiragi's job to throw down with him. But that doesn't mean he ain't got faith that Sakura can come out on top. The compliment straight up calms Sakura's anger towards Hiragi, but he's still pissed at the other dude for cutting in line and calling out Hiragi like that. Nairi thinks maybe the guy knows Hiragi from somewhere, but none of them know why they got beef because Hiragi doesn't talk about himself much. Meanwhile, as Sako's making his way up on stage, Tamiyama wishes him good luck in his fight, but Tagami gotta be all condescending and asks if something went down between him and Hiragi, because Sako usually ain't one to pick fights willingly. But Sako just ignores Tagami and keeps walking. Once the two are standing across from each other, Hiragi starts chatting, saying Sako did grow since the last time they crossed paths, but it's a damn shame he's repping Lion's head now because this fight's inevitable at this point. Sako stays silent throughout, and Tamiyama's bored of all the talking. 
so he straight up yells at them to start throwing down already. Since they're starting, Haragi puts his hands up, and Sako straight up charges at him, throwing a barrage of punches and kicks, but Haragi's straight up blocking them all like a pro. Sako keeps bringing the heat with his attacks, but by the end of his combo, Haragi ain't got any damage on him. Sako backs off for a second and tells Haragi not to look down on him like he used to because the old Sako is gone, and he's about to prove it right here. He straight up charges back in with a front kick, and Haragi ain't letting it slide either. But damn neither of them making any damn progress in this fight because they ain't landed a solid hit yet. Then in the middle of one kick Sako grabs his own leg and redirects the kick, barely missing Haragi's face and Haragi's mind is impressed. Nairi's freaking out because Haragi's playing defense, and the lion's head crew are all in, rooting hard for Sako to take down Haragi. Even Tagami's mind blown by how sick Sako's fighting skills are, but Tamiyama ain't thinking it's all that strange because he personally chose Sako as one of his top 5 dogs. Tagami has to admit that while he may not get Sako as a person, he's fought the most out of anyone here and nearly burned himself out when he first joined Lion's Head. Back to the stage, Sako's still bobbing and weaving Haragi's attacks, but he's taking the time to call him out for having zero style, just relying on brute strength. Sako saying Haragi ain't changed one damn bit, but Haragi can see the transformation in Sako, especially with how chatty he's getting right now. Haragi remembers Sako never opening his mouth the whole damn time he was teaching him how to throw down. But bringing up the past pisses Sako off and makes him charge at Haragi one more time. But this time he's speeding up like crazy, he catches Haragi off guard, knocking him back with a kick to the damn face. Everybody's jaws drop seeing Haragi get knocked out so damn easily. Sako stands tall over him, wondering when the hell Haragi got so weak. He blames Haragi's weakness on hanging out with all these damn furin clowns. Sakura starts getting mad, but not at Sako, rather he's pissed at Haragi for letting himself get dropped like a punk. Suo finds the whole damn thing funny, but mostly because Sakura's starting to show more love for his crew. Sakura gets all embarrassed by Suo's comment and claims he was just pissed because Sako was clowning them. But Yumamiya steps up and tells everyone to chill because it ain't over yet. Then he turns to Sako and reminds him that Haragi is one of the four kings of Bafurin and specifically he is their Tamontan. So he asks if Sako knows what Tamontan is also called. Sako doesn't get the point of that dumbass question, but when a hand lands on his shoulder, he's straight up shocked to see Haragi back on his feet, ready to throw down. It's been a minute since he got kicked like that, so he really felt it. But he knows it made him look weak as hell. He gives props to Sako for getting so damn strong since their last encounter, like a whole new person. But as the Tamont of Bafirin, he gotta flex a little, so he pops his stomach meds and gets ready for round two. We go way back to middle school when Sako was caught up in some serious bully drama. The dude was just trying to do his own thing and getting good grades, but these haters couldn't stand him shining. They came at him hard, throwing down fists like there was no tomorrow. But then Haragi swoops in like a hero to save the damn day. Fast forward to the present fight, the shit is turned into a straight up slugfist, both sides throwing punches left and right taking hits and dishing them out. The crowd's faces frozen in amazement at what's going down. Even Sakura can't wrap his head around how freaking strong Haragi is. Suo lets Sakura know that Haragi had to be a beast to earn a spot as one of Bafurin's kings. The whole damn town knows he's a force to be reckoned with. But Suo's convinced that Haragi cranked it up a notch all because of Sakura. The fight keeps going, and while it seems pretty even, Haragi starts gaining the upper hand and straight up knocks the focus out of Sako's eyes with a hell of a kick. Sako can't figure out how the hell Haragi's still so damn strong compared to him. Even after all the training he went through to improve himself, especially since he has been chilling and living the easy life with his friends here. We flash back to Sako's middle school days right after Haragi beat the crap out of those bullies. Sako couldn't wrap his head around why Haragi went out of his way to help him. Haragi didn't think he needed much of a reason to lend a hand to someone getting jumped. But he tells Sako straight up that he needs to learn to stand up for himself because that's the only way he gonna handle bullies like those. He reaches out a hand to help Sako get back on his feet, but instead of taking it, Sako grabs his sleeve and begs Haragi to teach him how to throw down. Haragi agrees, and from that day on, Sako trains hard with him and holds a ton of respect for him. It ain't like Haragi was trying to gather followers or nothing, but people naturally looked up to him because of his raw strength, 
and Sako was damn proud to be one of them. On the day Haragi graduated from middle school, Sako was straight up grilling him for getting into Furin. He was convinced Haragi would be on some next level shit there. But damn all that grilling got too damn heavy for Haragi to handle. So he straight up tells Sako not to tag along. He knows once he steps foot in Furin he gonna be under this dude Yumamiya. He can't live up to Sako's sky-high expectations. He wants Sako to find his own real goal instead of being his damn fanboy. Sako can't wrap his head around what the hell just went down. His idol essentially ditched his ass. So he takes out all that frustration by straight up whooping the asses of a local gang all by his damn self. And while he's standing there surrounded by bodies, Tagami and Tamiyama roll up on him. They hella impressed by his skills and offer him a spot on their crew. Sako asks if they got strong people on their team, and Tagami's like hell yes strength is everything to us. The stronger you are, the higher you climb. But Sako doesn't give a damn about no hierarchy shit. He just wants to fight strong people, so he can get stronger and make Hiragi regret dumping him. That's why he straight up refuses to lose to Hiragi in this damn fight. Unlike Hiragi he ain't been wasting time making friends, but he's been improving himself to be stronger than Hiragi. He charges forward trying to catch Hiragi off guard from below. Hiragi throws a punch to counter, but Sako pulls a slick ass move, backflipping right over him and getting ready to land a punch. But damn Hiragi ain't falling for that shit. He straight up boots Sako in the damn face, Sako's feet wobbling after that kick, but he ain't letting himself lose to someone who's satisfied being anywhere but the top. He tries to throw another punch. But this time Hiragi straight up catches it and apologizes to Sako for not being able to live up to his expectations. And right after that, he lands a punch so damn powerful that it gets Sako's soul searching real deep about why he was so damn angry. He knows Hiragi was looking out for him when he suggested finding a new goal. But he was being selfish as hell. He ain't wanna hear Hiragi tell him not to tag along because all he wanted was to stick by Hiragi's side no matter what. He doesn't give a damn if he ain't the top dog or some shit. All he wants is for Hiragi to ask him to come along. Sako collapses on the ground, making Hiragi the clear victor of the fight. Everyone's still in shock from the crazy ass show they just witnessed. Tagami wastes no time getting up and calling for someone to haul Sako's ass off the stage because he lost. But after seeing how well Sako fought, they all got too much respect for him to do something so damn disrespectful. And to help his boy out, Hiragi offers to carry Sako off the stage, lifting him up on his shoulders and gently dropping him on the floor. Tagami half-heartedly thanks Hiragi for the help, but mentions he didn't need to be so gentle with a loser's body. And since Sako lost, Tagami tried to remove his lion's head jacket. But Hiragi grabs his hand, stopping him and says, You might want to hold off on that shit till after your match. You never know what could happen. And before Hiragi bounces, he drops some knowledge on Tagami saying that running the team the way he is ain't gonna make them stronger. He walks his ass back to his seat, and Yumamiya congratulates him on the win. But Harag is surprised because Yumamiya ain't asking about Sako, and what the deal is between them. Yumamiya knows Haragi probably don't wanna talk about it, so he ain't gonna bother asking right now. He tells Haragi he can spill the whole story when he's ready. But for now, they should just focus on watching the next fight. We watch Tagami drifting off, reminiscing about the past, Tamiyama snaps him back to reality, reminding him it's his turn, Tagami tells Sakura to get ready, and the whole squad goes wild as Sakura declares he already is. The cheers get intense, and Suo points out they're going way harder than before. Everybody sending Sakura good vibes in their own way, and Yumamiya tells him to have a deep conversation. Sakura remembers a fight being like a talk, but he ain't even sure what that means. But screw all that because Sakura reminds himself he told the kid to trust him with everything. Sakura just wanna wrap up the fight quick, but Tagami wanna take his time and savor it. The two fighters gear up, and the crowd goes absolutely nuts with anticipation. Sakura tries to throw the first punch, but Tagami straight up tackles him. Tagami almost lands a bone-chilling punch, but Sakura manages to escape. The crowd cheers even louder, and Sakura gotta pull himself together from the shock of what just went down. Hiragi thinks about how Sakura been showing off his badass fighting skills these past few days, but Tagami is the one keeping all them crazy lion's head dudes in line. He was only able to do that because he mad strong. Sakura points out Tagami moving pretty damn fast for a dude who wanna take his time, but Tagami doesn't even consider that a fast pace. Tagami decides he gonna keep at this speed till Sakura can keep up, and Sakura is down to play along. 
they keep throwing down, and everyone's mind blown by Tagami's insane speed. Nairi wondering if Sakura had more than just dodges in his arsenal. Yumamiya breaking it down that Tagami and Tamiyama always been the standouts among the Lion's head crew. That means Tagami on a whole nother level compared to the other dudes, and he damn sure Sakura is feeling that better than anyone right now. Just then Nairi goes all out celebrating as Sakura manages to land a hit, and Tagami impressed he already catching up. But Sakura still ain't fast enough because Tagami slams him down, and damn he nearly crushes his skull. Tagami remembers how Sakura dissed him in the tunnel, calling him lame. He explains that it really gets under his skin. Just then Sakura pulls off a sweet leg sweep on Tagami, but Tagami ain't having it and smashes Sakura's face into the ground, the crowd goes wild with cheers, but Nairi is freaked out. Tagami pretty disappointed to see Sakura knocked out cold so easily, so he lets him know that he's way lamer than he ever could be. Sakura tries acting all cocky, but Tagami schools him, saying only folks with power can act like that. Tagami assumes Sakura is fronting because he rolling with a strong crew, but when he is all by himself, he has no voice, hearing that makes Sakura furious, so he swings at Tagami. Tagami points out that he's still talking, but Sakura breaks free and keeps throwing down. Sakura agrees that freedom is only for those with power, without it, you can't be true to yourself. As Sakura making his stand, everyone shocked when he lands a solid kick. Tagami seems to see Sakura as one of the people Sakura hates the most. So Sakura decides he can't lose to him no matter what. Sakura taking control of the fight now, and the crowd go dead silent, witnessing Sakura's sudden transformation. Nairi always knew Sakura had strength, but even he didn't see this coming. Sakura is mad as hell, reminding Tagami that losing to him means Tagami is dead wrong about everything. The lion's head obsession with power would mean nothing. Sakura keeps bombarding Tagami with attacks and finishes it off with a mega powerful kick straight to Tagami's face, leaving everyone stunned. Tagami tells Sakura not to get all cocky, and he counters with a devastating kick of his own, sending Sakura flying. Tagami explains that their devotion to power ain't no joke. Everyone cheering as he proclaims all lion's head dudes always strive to level up. Tagami stomps on Sakura's head, declaring that the lion's head guy's way more powerful than those wannabe superheroes like the Bafurin crew. The whole crowd celebrating because they think Sakura down for the count, but soon knows the fight ain't over yet. Sakura still kicking it somehow, and he straight up saying the lion's head dudes ain't about that real power. He suggests they switch up their name to the bully club, because that's more their style because they enjoying beating down dudes when they already down. They even chase down middle school kids just to beat them up. Sakura ain't taking no loss from dudes like them, but Tagami had enough and stomps on his head again. Nairi can't even watch, but he's shocked when the crowd goes quiet because Tagami ain't stomp Sakura's head this time. Tagami is clueless about what Sakura talking about, so he steps away from the fight for a second. He thought Furin step on their turf for no reason. So he demand Kanema and Arima spill the beans. They admit they was messing with the middle school kid and try to put the blame on someone else, but Tagami ain't buying it. He is straight up laying a beatdown on them, and everyone just watching in shock. Tagami snatch their lion's head jackets off their lifeless bodies, and Tamiyama just tells him to quit stalling and get back to his fight. Tagami apologized to Sakura for making him wait and declare it's time to keep it going. We take a trip down memory lane to a festival. Younger Tagami is surrounded by a bunch of lion's head dudes, but he takes them all out. He is ready to throw down with even more of them. But then Tamiyama shows up, amazed that Tagami took them all down solo. Tamiyama can see Tagami got mad strength, so he asked him to roll with them. Tagami mad confused, so Tamiyama explain he just joined himself, but he guarantee that Tagami gonna dig being part of the lion's head. Tagami is hesitant at first, but Tamiyama keeps pushing. Time pass, and they get really tight. One day, Tamiyama asks Tagami if he know what devotion to power mean. It's a promise you make to stay true to yourself, never backing down for nobody, and power is what you use to set yourself free. Word starts spreading about how unbeatable Tagami and Tamiyama are as a duo. They even roll into other crew's territories solo and come out on top. They come back from one of these brawls one day, and the other crew members can't even believe they went through all that just to get revenge for one of their own. Tamiyama ain't thinking it's a big deal, because he just trying to be the freest dude ever. Ain't nobody got a clue what he talking about, so Tagami break it down. They have been taught that power is the ticket to freedom. It means the dude with the most muscle is also the most free. 
Tamiyama and Tagami having a race to see who can be the ultimate free dude, so he hyping up the rest to join in. Tagami thinking about how Tamiyama is straight up strong and having more fun than anyone else. Tamiyama like the prodigy of their devotion, like a son embodying the whole concept. Tagami ain't even plan on racing Tamiyama. He just ain't good at hanging with peeps. But when he is with Tamiyama, he fits right in the crew. It's a blast, and he feeling hella liberated. Tagami thought having Tamiyama as the leader would make the crew even more free, but now he see he was wrong. One day, after Tamiyama take over as the boss of Lion's Head, he thinking about how the leader gotta be the strongest and the freest. Tagami is down with that idea, but Tamiyama looking all messed up because he realizes it ain't fun at all. He decides the only way to fix it is if everyone in Lion's Head is as strong as him. Tagami stoked to hear that and thinks Tamiyama wanna train everybody up. Just then some dudes from the crew roll in with a member who got wrecked by the Zinc boys. Tagami ready to get revenge with Tamiyama, but he straight up horrified when Tamiyama attacks the beaten up member. Tamiyama disappointed because the dude came back after getting crushed, and he explained that ain't gonna make him stronger. That means he can never be free, and that ain't no fun. That's when Tamiyama lay down the law that weak dudes ain't welcome in Lion's Head. He looking for Tagami to agree, but Tagami is still shocked. Tagami is sure this ain't gonna make nobody stronger, but Tamiyama reminding him he the boss. He is the toughest and the freest, so he calling the shots. Then Tamiyama straight up tells Tagami that if he ain't getting it, he better bounce. Tagami straight up tripping about what he hears, but he agrees to do what Tamiyama says. He agrees to spread the word about Tamiyama's beliefs, and he even agrees to lay down the beatdown on anyone who go against them. But Tagami got one favor to ask. He wants Tamiyama to always keep smiling around everyone. It's on that day that Tagami decides he gonna get dirty and covered in mud. Because Tamiyama is like the sun, and the sun gotta be loved by everyone, even if it means blinding them with power to be free. Tagami swears he gonna keep this version of Lion's Head going till the sun shines again. Now back to the present, the dude's still going at it, but everyone's straight up shocked when Sakura starts taking charge. Sakura getting annoyed and straight up can't believe Tagami being for real. He points out that Tagami doesn't even seem like he wanna throw a punch or dodge his kicks. Sakura wondering what the hell Tagami trying to do, and Tagami can't help but wonder the same damn thing. Sakura's just dodging some of Tagami's attacks, but he can sense something ain't right. There's confusion in Tagami's fists. Sakura thought they picked this fight because they knew everything, but Tagami clearly clueless. Sakura wants answers, so he straight up asks Tagami why he started throwing punches at those dudes. He figured anyone with power could do whatever the hell they wanted in Lion's Head. But he's shocked when Tagami explains that scumbags ain't welcome in this turf. Turns out Tagami was trying to clean up their crew, get rid of all the scumbags. They ran into Bofurin at the bridge, and fighting Bofurin was Tamiyama's obsession. Tagami thought it might bring about some change, but damn that fight just ended up wrecking them all. Tagami ain't turning back though. He made the wrong choice that rainy day, and he's sticking to this messed up path. Sakura ain't having it and asks what the hell Tagami's trying to accomplish. He's shocked when Tagami straight up says he wants to head to the mountains. Sakura don't give a damn about any of that. He straight up points out that Tagami's one of the scumbags he's trying to get rid of. The dude's doing scumbag stuff, and Sakura thinks he's hella lame for it. Sakura wants Tagami to realize that himself, so he's gonna do it by winning this fight. Once that happens, Sakura's certain Tagami will stop being a lame ass, and become an awesome dude he can actually fight against. Tagami thinks Sakura's being selfish, but Sakura don't give a damn. That's just how it goes when you push your will through in a fight. As Sakura launches his attack, he declares that no matter how strong his opponent is, even if they saved his life, he never looks away or changes who he is. That shit triggers Tagami's memory once again. He remembers how shocked he was when Tamiyama told him he could bounce from Lion's Head if he didn't like his vision. Tagami decided to do all the dirty work so Tamiyama could keep smiling with everyone. Sakura's attack lands, and so do his words. Tagami starts laughing as he gives props to Sakura for pushing his buttons really good. Tagami throws a punch at Sakura, and Sakura's glad because he can tell Tagami's finally getting serious. Sakura throws the nickname Shaggy at him, but Tagami ain't having it. He kicks off his sandals, getting ready for a real deal fight, and demands to be called by his real name. 
Togami's finally ready to throw down, so he calls Sakura by his name and tells him it's time to fight. These two fighters go all out, landing mad attacks on each other. The crowd goes dead silent, watching this straight up brawl go down. Ain't no holding back from either of them. But the crowd's freaked out because they notice Sakura and Togami both laughing their asses off, even though they're beating the crap out of each other. Shit gets real brutal as they straight up wreck each other with a barrage of attacks, but they're both loving every second of it. Suo's watching in awe because he had no clue Sakura was this damn good in a fight. Nairi don't really get why, but he's tearing up because their fights touched his heart for some reason. Even Haragi and Yumamiya are impressed with Sakura. But Tamiyama's just silently watching the whole thing. Sakura keeps going at it, but something's messing with his head. He's supposed to be fighting some dude who does lame ass stuff, so he can't figure out why fighting Tagami feels so damn right. Sakura's also surprised because he's never been called by his name during a fight before. Tagami's doing some thinking of his own, noticing that Sakura's having a damn good time in this brawl. And that ain't all, because he can tell Sakura's moving better with each damn moment. Tagami can't even hide his own enjoyment. He tells Sakura to bring it on, and they both charge at each other. The fight hits its peak when they both kick each other square in the face at the exact same time, and collapse to the ground. Nairi's horrified, but these two fighters just keep laughing. Tagami never knew fights could be this damn enjoyable, and Sakura feels the same way. They've been at it long enough though, so they decide to end this madness. These two charge at each other once again, getting ready to throw their most powerful punches. But then Togami starts thinking about what Sakura said, how he ain't ever gonna change who he is for anyone. And that shit hits Togami hard because he realizes he should have fought back against what Tamiyama told him that day. But instead he looked away and didn't stay true to himself. Togami couldn't push through his own identity, but he sees that potential in Sakura. He knows Sakura's gonna become even stronger because he ain't afraid to assert his own will. No matter who he's up against, Tagami just hopes Sakura never loses that. So he decides to hold back on throwing his punch, and in his mind, he thanks Sakura for helping him understand. Sakura's punch actually lands, and Tagami declares he can't move no more and gives up. The crowd's stunned because they ain't never heard those words from Tagami. The dude who charges in laughing even in dangerous situations, even the Bofferin guys are speechless. But Sakura's really pissed off because he doesn't get why Tagami's just giving up like that. He ain't happy with how the fight ended, and demands to know why Tagami chose to lose on purpose. Sakura gets interrupted by hyped up Tamiyama, who says he wants to fight Sakura someday. But right now Tamiyama's ready to throw down with Yumamiya. Tagami urges Tamiyama to call off the whole fight because he's realized he was in the wrong. Tamiyama's too amped about fighting Yumamiya to listen, so Tagami keeps insisting. But then shit gets real when everyone's shocked to see Tamiyama attacking Tagami and telling him to shut the hell up. Tamiyama claims Tagami lost, so he gotta quiet down. And that sets Sakura off big time. He goes to punch Tamiyama, but out of nowhere Yumamiya shows up and stops him. Yumamiya explains it's time to switch places, but Sakura's so damn angry he can't back down. Yumimiya points out that Sakura must have had a deep ass conversation, and defending Tagami is proof of that. Tagami is then shocked when Yumimiya asks if he can just leave the rest to him. Tagami gives the green light, so he bounces from the stage, and Sakura does the same. Sakura in his usual pissed off mode, straight up tells Yumimiya that he's gonna whoop his ass if he loses to Tamiyama. As Sakura struts off the stage, he can't wrap his head around why he's feeling so damn angry about Tagami getting attacked. He ponders how Yumamiya seemed all stoked about him having a proper conversation, but Sakura still can't get it, because he didn't hear no words from his fists. Nairi catches Sakura before he falls, and the crew welcomes him back. Haragi knows Sakura ain't digging how the fight ended, but he breaks it down that it was Tagami's way of settling things. And on top of that, Haragi gives props to Sakura for doing real damn well, but Sakura still doesn't know how to take a compliment. Tamiyama's pumped as hell about finally getting to throw down with Yumamiya, but Yumamiya wants to ask him something first. Yumamiya wants to know if Tamiyama felt anything watching Tagami and Sakura go at it. Tamiyama's clueless as hell, so Yumamiya says it's a damn shame. Tamiyama doesn't know why it's a shame either, but he don't give a damn. All he knows is it ain't fair how Bafurin's got so many strong peeps, and it's nothing like Lion's Head. Tamiyama realizes everyone in his crew is weak as hell and he figures that's why he can't be free. The crowd straight up shocked to hear Tamiyama talking like this, and they can't believe that's how he really thinks of them. 
Tamiyama makes it clear he only gives a damn about power, because it makes him feel good knowing that if he wins, Furin will be his. Tamiyama thinks Yumami is always having a blast because he's stronger and freer than anyone else in Furin. If he can prove he's stronger than Yumamiya, Tamiyama's dead certain he'll finally be free and have way more fun than anyone else. He's jumping for joy because he can finally put an end to all his boring ass days. Now Tamiyama turns to Yumamiya and demands he hand over Furin. He jumps on Yumamiya and lands a bunch of punches. Yumamiya manages to shake him off, but Tamiyama just keeps coming at him. The Bofurin guys are left dumbfounded because they ain't never seen such reckless moves in a fight before so thinks Tamiyama's a natural-born monster. Haragi gets it because Tamiyama is the youngest damn leader in Lion's Head's history. Sakura's still fuming with anger, but he realizes he would have been screwed if Yumamiya didn't stop his punch, but that ain't the only thing that's pissing Sakura off. He knows damn well he only beat Tagami because Tagami held back in the end. Sakura ain't no pushover though, and he's more determined than ever to get hella stronger. Tamiyama keeps throwing down with his wild ass fighting style to keep Yumamiya on edge. But he pauses for a second when Yumamiya's got something to say. Yumamiya explains that Tamiyama's gonna keep struggling if he keeps talking about what he doesn't have and trying to take things from other people. Tamiyama's had enough of Yumamiya's talking though, and he thinks it's all gibberish, so he just goes in for another attack. Yumamiya unleashes a punch that's so damn terrifying, and Tamiyama's gotta back the hell up. Yumamiya's disappointed that Tamiyama can't understand what he's trying to say, and Tamiyama's shocked when his nose starts bleeding. Even though Yumamiya's punch didn't land, Yumamiya straight up declares that when it comes to someone who can't get his point, he's 100% sure he won't lose. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.